Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Approximately 30 years ago, two women on Staten Island began praying individually that perpetual Eucharistic adoration would start on Staten Island. The chapel itself uh, was like an oasis in the middle of a desert where I could come and uh, uh, have quiet. And the Holy Spirit knew that I was trying to uh, live uh, God's plan for me out in my own life. And he opened so many doors, not only for me, but also for the uh, chapel. So uh, as we go forward, I can never ever thank our Lord and his most blessed mother enough for taking this humble servant and allowing me to work on the things that they want accomplished uh, by just trying to do my very best. And Deacon Jim, how did you, okay. tell us a little bit about your background. Too. Yeah, certainly. Uh, uh, as Brother Al, I was uh, brought up in Brooklyn, uh, a Lady Helper Christians parish. I had the uh, lovely uh, Sisters of Charity of Halifax, who oh, yeah. gave me a, a very good foundation. Uh, from there, I went to Fordham University, and uh, after Fordham, I uh, went into the financial business after a little stint in the uh, service, and uh, I was with Merrill Lynch for 35 years. My uh, clerical uh, uh, life really began when I was ordained uh, by Cardinal O'Connor in uh, 1991. Actually, uh, this November 23rd will be my uh, silver anniversary as, as a deacon. And uh, uh, I have uh, uh, three children. Uh, I am a widower. My wife died on the Feast of the Assumption back in uh, 1991. It was three months before I was ordained, but she's looked after me uh, since then from uh, up, up above. above. <laughs> and I have uh, 10 uh, grandchildren. In this session of our interviews today, I am so happy to welcome Bishop John O'Hara and Bishop Peter Byrne, who have been intricate in the success of perpetual adoration on Staten Island. And I would now like to ask them just to share their own personal perspective on perpetual adoration and the chapel. Bishop John. Well, Deacon Jim, thank you very much. And on this occasion, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Adoration Chapel at Alba House. I'd just like to go back to something that happened to me long before I went into the seminary. The priest who influenced me, uh, who got me thinking about priesthood, without ever mentioning, he brought me into the church one day and he pointed to the tabernacle and he said, remember this, John, without the Blessed Sacrament, this is nothing but a museum, a stone cold tomb. And I prayed about that and thought about that and realized he was saying something much more profound, that without Jesus' presence in the Eucharist in our hearts, we're stone cold tombs.
Now, uh, Bishop Peter, could you share with us uh, your perspective? I think nowadays, um, one of the reasons why mass attendance goes down is because people can approach the mass as a ceremony, as something that exists outside of them, instead of entering into the mystery of, of the sacrifice of the mass. And the two things, like I said this morning, was two things that, that prevent that from happening is when somebody go to confession to prepare for mass, and when they play for, before the Blessed Sacrament outside of mass. Because mm -hmm. if they don't do that, like uh, Bishop John said, then they can be could become cold. You know, their their whole reaction to the mystery uh, can be uh, dried up uh, unless they they refurbish it, they strengthen their faith by recognizing this is Jesus is really there. I mean, mm -hmm. that was a St. John Vianney point used to point you know <coughs> to the tabernacle and tell his parishioners he's really there.